This video is supported by Brilliant. In November of 2018, a really cool story made its way around the interwebs that some geniuses at MIT created a plane with no moving parts. And it was the first plane ever powered by ion propulsion. Now, I just talked about ion drives in space recently, the idea that they uh, ionize xenon atoms and then fire them out the back with strong electromagnets. That's not what this is. That wouldn't produce nearly enough thrust here on Earth to do anything, but this works in a similar-ish way. In space, you have to carry xenon with you because there's no atmosphere to propel out the back, but here on Earth, there's plenty of atmosphere. So the plane had an array of aerofoils shaped just like an airplane wing to create lift when air passes over it, but just in front of those aerofoils there was a thin wire. They ran positive 20,000 volts through the wire, which ionized the air around it, mostly nitrogen. Then they ran negative 20,000 volts through the aerofoil behind it. This attracted the positive ions around the wire, causing them to rush toward the aerofoil. In the process, they collide with billions of air molecules and create an ionic wind over the blade. This creates lift, and the plane flew. By the way, if the term ionic wind sounds familiar, you might be thinking of the Ionic Breeze air purifier from the sharper image back in the 90s. Only the Ionic Breeze positively charges incoming air while pulling it toward a negatively charged grid. Positively charged contaminants attach to the collection grid, and cleaned air is accelerated into the room, creating a fresh, clean smell. This is actually kind of on the same principle. It only flew for 60 meters, but that was the length of the gem they were using to test it, so it probably could have gone further, and it's worth noting that's almost twice as far as the Wright brothers' first flight. So there's a really long way to go before you would ever actually fly on a silent plane that works like this. You know, uh, it was a super lightweight plane. 40,000 volts is a lot of energy that would drain a battery pretty quickly. So it's still here or there whether or not it would actually become an actual viable source of transportation. But the principles behind this plane might be the key to a source of a new kind of energy, or at least a new spin on an old kind of energy. Wind energy has been around for hundreds of years. It's actually one of the oldest sources of energy we've ever tapped into. In fact, there are windmills in Nashtafan, Iran that are a thousand years old and still working. They also make excellent sparring partners if you're an aging delusional conquistador. Today, wind energy makes up 5.5% of all the energy produced around the world, which makes it the second highest renewable energy source in the world outside of hydropower. That's 519 gigawatts of energy as of 2018, twice as much as solar. Although solar is growing faster than wind, averaging a year-over-year -year increase of 23.79%, as opposed to wind energy, which is 12.14%. And there are good reasons for this. I mean, wind energy is awesome, but it does have its issues. Issues like birds. The fact that birds do get killed in the blades of wind turbines is both sad and overblown. Uh, some anti-wind groups have actually used that as a reason to block the production of wind farms because they claim that, you know, uh, endangered birds in the area would get wiped out if they were flying through there. It's hard to pin down an exact number of how many birds get killed in wind turbines every year. Um, anti-wind groups have used anywhere between 300,000 and 500,000 as a number. But just to put that into perspective, uh, 600 million birds get killed by flying into buildings in the United States every year. And oh yeah, house cats? kill 2.4 billion birds every year. But if you're on a mission to save every single bird possible, yes, birds do get killed in wind farms. Other issues with wind energy just include the massive size of these things, which makes it very difficult to get to the actual sites where it's being done. And building wind farms is a massive construction project that does do a lot of damage to the surrounding landscape, although that is usually temporary. But there's a reason why these wind generators have to be so big. It's to offset the cost of maintenance. Windmills have a lot of moving parts. That's, that's kind of their thing. They turn kinetic energy into electrical energy, and any engineer will tell you the more moving parts a thing has, the more opportunity there is for something to break or go wrong. Solar, on the other hand, has no moving parts, so the maintenance on that is extremely minimal. Plus, there are end-of-life issues around wind turbines. They have a lifespan of around 20 to 25 years, so over time, that becomes a lot of 747-sized pieces of carbon fiber and fiberglass that have to be you know disposed of it's not recyclable and it's already starting to pile up in landfills and last but not least since these things are such massive projects they can only really be installed by utility companies it's not something like solar that can be distributed and you know somebody can just put it up on the roof of their house now none of this is meant to be a strike against wind energy every form of energy production has its strengths and weaknesses wind is just more of a utility scale uh, type of production whereas solar could be both and it's for this reason that engineers and scientists have been working on some kind of solid-state wind energy production, a way to create energy from wind with no moving parts. 
And the basic idea behind this is sort of the reverse of that ionic plane that I was talking about before. Instead of creating wind by using ionic particles, it uses wind to create a flow of charged particles that you can then tap into to generate electricity. This idea was explored in a paper published in August of last year in the journal Applied Physics Letters by Richard Epstein of the University of New Mexico, and if it works, it could be a game changer. Now before I get into that one, there was a similar idea put forth in 2013 by TU Delft in the Netherlands that they called EWACON. EWACON stands for Electrostatic Wind Energy Converter, and this design used charged water droplets that are blown by the wind, and the movement of the droplets generate an electrical current that can be put into the grid. There's a prototype on the campus that I don't think is actually operational anymore, but it looks cool, so why not? Now this is an awesome idea for sure, but its reliance on water to create the aerosols that carry the charge is a little bit problematic. For one thing, you have to have access to you know, water line somewhere around where you should put this thing up, and also it doesn't work in freezing temperatures. Plus the water would have to be super purified to prevent mineral buildup on the nozzles. And let's face it, if you're in drought conditions, probably the last thing you should be doing is spraying more water into the air. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a cool idea, but the water thing is problematic. This new idea, though, takes a similar approach, but gets rid of all that pesky water. Described as a solid state wind energy transformer, or SWET. Sweat, baby, sweat, baby. This design generates electricity through ionic currents through a process called electrohydrodynamics. Here's how it works. The prototype they built for this study consisted of 55 parallel 17 gauge aluminum wires strung between two 8.5 meter tall wooden masts separated by about 8 meters. There are two types of wires, attractor wires, which are bare, and emitter wires, which contain small tufts of 7 micrometer carbon fiber spread out every 15 centimeters, kind of like barbed wire. When small negative currents run through the emitter wires, the tufts create a coronal discharge, releasing negatively charged ions into the air. These negative ions want to drift toward the attractor wires, but when the wind passes through it, it carries the negative ions away with it, giving the array a slight positive charge. This positive charge causes electrons to rush in from the ground to balance things out, and that rush of electrons can be captured as electricity. Now granted, you are using electricity to create the coronal discharge in the first place, but this system creates a loop where ions blow off the array and then fall back to the ground and get sucked back up into it again, creating a loop effect that does produce a net gain of electricity. It's not much electricity, uh, at least with this prototype thing, it's only about 1 20th of a watt, but this is just a prototype, it's just a, you know, proof of concept. And I actually spoke on the phone with Dr. Epstein himself, and he said that they are working on a new prototype design of this, and they did secure a grant from the National Science Foundation to create a 100 watt version. Now that's still not a whole lot of energy either, but that's a 20,000% increase. So there's still a long way to go on this idea, he did emphasize that it's still not guaranteed to work, but it is a cool idea. You know, adjusting for size, adjusting for layers, you could stack grids on top of each other to create a, a net effect to get even more out of each one of these arrays. There's a lot of different ways that you can tweak this that they could be working on over the following years to, to actually get some useful energy out of it. The main benefit is just the insanely cheap price of creating and maintaining these arrays. I mean, it's, it's literally just a bunch of aluminum wire when it all comes down to it. Now, considering how long wind turbines have been around and how much they've scaled up over the years, there's still a long way to go before the sweat concept sweat, baby, sweat, baby. reaches any kind of parity, but every new innovation starts somewhere, so we'll see what happens. And what I would love to see happen is for these kinds of grids to become modular and decentralized so that just anybody could put one up on their house and just generate energy from their home. I mean, just like a, just be like a, a, a solar panel that works at night, works 24 hours a day. Although I should say that when I brought that up to Dr. Epstein, he did say that it, it probably would never quite get to that point, but you know, a guy can dream. You know, I got a lot of requests to, to talk about this after another YouTuber covered it. Um, I'll put a link to the video down in the description. It, it's a good video, but now that I've talked to Dr. Epstein, I think he may have oversold it a little bit, and I think people may have gotten a little bit too excited about it at this point. It's just not quite there yet. <laughs> Here I am throwing cold water on something people are excited about. Again, I'm the worst. Why do people follow me? But you know what? It's still cool. Just like that ion propulsion plane, it might become a thing. It might not. You don't know. But you know what? You never know where these ideas might lead. Human innovation is always something to cheer for. And talk about this amongst yourselves down below in the comments. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think that uh, this actually has any legs? Do you think it could ever become, you know, at parity with regular wind energy? Discuss. So yeah, big thanks to Dr. Epstein for talking to me the other day and setting me straight on this. It was really helpful. Um, I'll put a link to his paper down in the description. You guys can go check it out. I will tell you, it's, it's very technical. A lot of it was over my head, which is why I got in touch with him in the first place. But many of you guys are much smarter than I am, so you'll, you'll probably get it. And if you don't get it and you want to get a little bit smarter on that topic, I can recommend the Electricity and Magnetism course on Brilliant.
That's a smooth transition right there. Check me out. Through nine interact with quizzes and 95 exercises, this course will get you up to speed on the phenomenon that makes our way of life possible, including whatever it is you're watching this video on. From the physical observations that inspired Maxwell's field equations to capacitance, conductors, magnetic fields, and a bevy of famous laws, you'll get a better handle on electricity than ever before. That is just one of over 60 courses on Brilliant, covering everything from classical physics courses, the quantum mechanics courses, applied science, computer algorithms, even competitive math, even logical thinking and deductive reasoning. There's a ton of useful stuff to learn. And you learn it by problem solving, which kind of hacks your brain's natural learning skills so you can learn it in a way that makes sense to you and sticks with you long after you go back to watching cat videos. Plus, you can do it on your mobile device and take it offline so you can do it with you, you know, wherever you might go. Just, you know, wear a mask. By the way, you don't have to be that ambitious about it. Maybe you just want a place to go and do a fun brain activity every day. For that, they have daily challenges. And that gives you a little tiny brain workout. It takes about 10 minutes of your time, but the effects of that do add up. And if you want to get a taste of what I'm talking about, they do have daily free brain teasers that you can go check out. And you can do the first section of every course for free. So you can take a look at it, see if it teases your brain. If it does, go for it. But if you do want to sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses, the first 200 people that sign up at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe will get 20% off your subscription. So yeah, go check it out. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down below. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, Google thinks you might like this one. Um, you might check out any of the others on the sidebar that have my face on it. And if you like them, I do make videos every week. So you, I, I invite you to subscribe so you can be the first ones to see it. If you like this t-shirt, it's available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash store. Um, there's lots of fun stuff there. Hoodies, mugs, stickers, posters, you name it. And they're all fun, kind of clever, sciencey stuff. Show the world what a nerd you are. Because it's cool, right? All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week, stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.